It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, I'm Gary Shorman, and this is the Forum on Eagle Television. It's good to have you watching along. You know, on the big shows, they talk about things like Face the Nation. This is like Face the Counties right here, and our guest is Ken Rogers. Ken has just returned from what has been the tying longest record of the Kansas legislature, 114 days. And Ken, want to talk a little bit. First off, did you ever think the legislative session was going to end? Well, I was a little concerned. It seemed like that uh, every day, uh, it was honestly, Gary, I'll be honest with you, it was very frustrating that we would get there in the morning and there would be seemingly no plan or uh, things were still being discussed behind the scenes. And so we were kind of sitting there looking at each other and waiting for the next day to see what would happen. So um, it just, it got really frustrating when you're trying to represent the people and not being able to get something accomplished. But uh, as it always does, things come uh, there towards the end and things get uh, seemingly done and we're done, and now we focus on what happens uh, the next session. Well, you know what, you uh, talk about 114 days, that's a, that's a long session, but there were really some challenging issues to go after. You represent the 110th district, and that district is, you know, a little part of Northwest Ellis County, and then it kind of winds away up into Northwest Kansas. Mm -hmm. When you go back home and you're back home now, what are people saying? Because, you know, there's a lot of things and we'll talk about some of the issues, but what are they telling you about the legislature in general? Well, I think many of them are glad that it's finally over. Uh, a lot of folks, uh, you know, even maybe assume we're still going. But uh, uh, I think, you know, the situation is where it is right now, kind of waiting to see how it's going to play out. Uh, I think still a lot of focus is on what goes on beyond the legislative level. Uh, there's still really, Gary, there's a lot of focus on the national scene. And I think people are still trying to figure out the new administration, what's going to go on there, and how that moves back down to the, uh, to the state and then even their, their local scene. And so I think really it's, it's a little too early to tell by some of the things that just uh, the new laws that went into effect the 1st of July. And so I think even with the tax situation, the W-2 wage earners are kind of figuring out what is and is not out of their check. And I know we don't talk about issues right now, but, but those are really kind of some of the things. The other thing is they're going, you mean it's only going to be a few more months you guys are back at it again? That's, that's another thing that's come up. Well, you know, it's, it's a tough because it's a citizen's legislature. So in theory, you have a real job you're supposed to be doing, but when the session lasts that long, it continues on. You're still making trips from northwest Kansas back and forth into Topeka to be able to do that. It does make for a hard, a hard time and to do anything else other than just be a legislator. As a small business owner, I mean, what, what happened was some of the plans I wanted to do uh, early, late spring, early summer just had to be put on hold. So we're trying to make that up to get to some things in place so uh, the business will work uh, when we're back in Topeka in January. And so it does make it very difficult. But again, it's a commitment we make to our uh, people that elect us. The citizens of Kansas expect us to go and do our job and that discuss the issues, vote on things that maybe aren't the most popular, maybe the easiest things to vote for, but that's what they expect in the representatives. Like anybody that gets involved, whether they represent you as a state representative, state senator, or other level, realize that there is a big commitment to it and, and you, you have to have that as a big priority. If, if you know, it is a citizen legislator, legislature, and again, it's kind of a part-time deal, but I think the citizens and the voters want you to give that, that as big of a full commitment almost as you can. Let's do talk issues because if we're going to face Kansans and take a look at it, there's a couple of big ones, one that affected everybody. I know we sent out a note to our, our uh, employees across the state that, you know, they're going to have to make some changes on their withholding because, boy, there's more taxes in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And uh, what have you heard on that? Because there's a group that was, you know, we got to do something. We can't be the poorest state in the country and survive. And so at the same time, it's like, boy, how do we pay more taxes? Coming out of that, you know, what was your feeling on that process and how the, the final vote came down? Well, I am one of just a few in western Kansas that actually voted against the tax increase. And I'll, I'll explain the reason why. And I've talked to a lot of constituents the reason why, because there was a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of say, well, it would have been easy to do that. And, and I understand the situation we were in, something needed to happen and somebody needs to be a leader, and I do serve on the Taxation Committee. So I've been involved in all those conversations, and the things that I wanted to see accomplished, and the folks that told me what they wanted to see, we proposed those ideas, they didn't go anywhere. So what happened was, what, what uh, took place was 
uh, a, a, the, the raise the taxes on basically any pass-through income, which a lot of folks thought that, that primarily known as the LLC mm -hmm. uh, situation, but all pass-through tax, and also those are the W-2 wage earners. Uh, all those all those income taxes went up. And so one of my concerns was, I believe this economy is going to turn around. The state, we're seeing some, some signs the economy is turning around. The national economy, I believe, is going to turn around. My concern is, all of a sudden, we raise a lot of money without a plan to pay off some of our long-term debt, some of our bonds. We would create more programs, and then when the economy does make a downturn, as cyclically it does, we have to go back and raise taxes again, which may be a concern now looking at a year or two down the road. So, but, but that being said, the process is working. We'll see what happens. So but one of the things that I decided to do in this whole process, when it got right down to the final days, there was a program that I thought was vitally important to rural Kansas called the All Ad Astra Jobs Program, introduced mm -hmm. by Representative Waymaster from Russell. And I decided that somebody needed to defend an investment in rural Kansas. And so I went to the floor and I said, I encourage everybody to be with me and support this, that we need a victory for Western Kansas, for our small communities, to allow investment to come in, to create jobs, and to bring economic opportunity if we're going to do all these things. A different place than Overland Park, Kansas. Right, right. Well, that fell, that fell short and in, in the politics of it all. Uh, sometimes those are fun, sometimes they're not. But I'm not giving up, but that's where I was going to stand and, and do my best to represent rural Kansas, not only just western Kansas, but all of rural Kansas. I felt that was vitally important, that we needed to have a champion, and I decided that was one thing I was going to do. The votes were there to pass this tax situation, and we're going to work our way through it and see what happens. What I want to make sure is that we don't we don't create more things before we get our obligations, just like every family has to take care of. It'd be like going out and getting another credit card rather than taking care and having a plan to pay off that other credit card. Well, the governor, who is very fiscally conservative, as we know, and we've talked about that on some mm -hmm. previous shows, his uh, comments were, he said the session made history for the wrong reasons, the largest tax heist in Kansas history, the biggest budget in Kansas history, and every dime of that new money has been already been spent. So well, that's the governor's comments on it. Well, and, and again, we could get into some semantics of, of who was the, really involved and who was in the session. Uh, but honestly, I mean, the governor wasn't overly involved, to be quite honest. And so a, a, as we move forward, uh, part of this whole situation was uh, all the income tax money is going to go to pay for schools. People said, that's one thing people said, fund our schools, pay for our schools. So all that income tax money is going to be going directly to the schools. So now we'll see what happens as we move forward. But would it make history for the wrong reasons? I don't know. You know, I did a little piece on, on, on my website, on kenforkansas.com, if I can make that plug. Is this like a Twitter yeah. kind of thing for it, Ken? You no, know, it, it, it's a it's website. It's a long it's, Twitter. It, it, well, it, it's a website. And so I went out in one of my wheat fields and as, as we were cutting wheat and, and talked about some of the things that were successful. I mean, obviously, the, the big ones we talked about, the budget, school finance, and taxes, took a lot of, uh, of ink, if you will. Mm -hmm. But we did things like um, uh, we, we passed a, a bill so that people can serve their community as a city council person or a county commissioner and also serve as emergency management personnel. You know, be an ambulance driver, be an EMT, situations and in like some that. some small communities, that's a big deal Absol because there's not that many people to go around. Absolutely. We raised the rates for uh, trucks hauling agriculture goods from 85,000 to 90,000 pounds on certain Kansas highways. We, we did have some small victories. They may not have grabbed all the headlines, but I think we did do some good. But again, Gary, with this being the first year of a two-year session, there's still an awful lot of work left to be done. Well, we're going to come back and talk about some things that need to follow up and maybe some of the things you're seeing coming down. We talked about the national level and how those will affect Kansans. We'll talk a little bit about maybe what goes into the school because they're still working on some funding things from the school standpoint. Ken Rogers is our guest here. He represents the 110th district in the Kansas legislature. Back with more after this. 
Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci Robotic Surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Pulse, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Pulse-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discrete access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Pulse powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Pulse. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. Welcome back to the second half of our forum program here on Eagle Television. The forum is brought to you by Hayes Med. If you have any ideas, uh, maybe some thoughts for future programs, I'd like to hear from you. You can send them to gary.shorman at eaglecom.net. Also go online to our Facebook page again. We're right there under ECTV Forum, and uh, you can send your suggestions for programs, any ideas you might have uh, to our Facebook page, and click off and we'll be your friend. Our guest is Ken Rogers, and Ken is the representative in our area to the northwest of here in the 110th district of the Kansas legislature. It was a rock'em sock'em 114 days of legislative session at the end. We talked a little bit about, in some detail, about the new taxes and how those are going to pay for certain things. But in that process, Ken, when you were doing it, before we go to some of the other things that we're, that we're going to talk about here, um, who were the winners and losers in that? tax increase? Is it the schools that are the winners? Kansans the winners in general? I mean, just when you look at the whole state. I know you were fighting right. for rural Kansas, right. which is your job. You right. represent maybe the biggest area of rural Kansas in the state. Who won? Who lost? Well, I think it's still early to tell. I mean, quite honestly, I think we'll have a better idea after the first full year gets implemented. Uh, when it started on July the 1st, the rates are a little bit lower. They are going to go up again in January when it takes full effect. Will it help Kansas this year get out of our kind of oh, A little mess. The, the, the biggest thing that's going to help Kansas is Kansas being involved in the economy. As Kansans go out, you know, go out to eat at those restaurants, shop locally, those sales tax receipts come up, that will help Kansans. I, uh, you know, one of the things is we shored up school finance a little bit. I know right now as we're talking, the state Supreme Court is going through the whole process. That's did, one of my questions yes, here. We can just go right did, into that did, too. Did, so where is that? Did the funding formula, is, is it adequately funding the schools? I think that's up to uh, the court as they will decide. I think a lot of folks that, that are, are very much involved and have it in the past think at least this is adequate for now. Uh, it'll probably go ahead and pass. Schools will open this year, so parents won't have a, you know, they'll start in August, everybody mm -hmm. will start. Uh, but there'll, there'll be some more changes that will have to be made as far as, I think, l looking and moving forward. But th those, those, that's another contentious issue. Some say they've got more than enough. Some say it's not near enough. Uh, what are you hearing from your constituents in the 110th? Well, w what we're hearing is, like I, like I campaigned on to continue to fight for our small schools. And, and my schools range from Hayes High down to Palco. And so, so we've got a 5A down to some small 1As is who I represent. And so the biggest thing that, that patrons and administrators want is they just want to know where they are with the dollars. It's very difficult this year. We made it very difficult for them to budget because we were still haggling over dollars and formula rather than letting the schools and the, and the boards and administrators determine what that budget is. So I, I think that's one of the things that we move forward. Uh, you know, where we are at the state, I, th I think it helps things, but I don't think the thing is resolved at all as far as where we are with taxes and, and what, what form it needs to take. And, and when you represent the rural areas, you know, sometimes there's almost a bigger question, and those are really hard to get into. Is, you know, how do you find some efficiencies when you have smaller administrative areas to work out of. It just makes it really difficult whether you're in business, trying to run a store in a small town, or whether you're running a, a, a county. You know, it's still one of those things, it's really hard to figure out how to find efficiencies to do that and still provide the services that you really need. You still need those things in those small communities. In fact, I had a conversation with the, the Ellis County Administrator on looking at are there some things we can do 
counties and cities and various areas and kind of start that process. Uh, as far as it's, it's really early in the stages and we'll be talking with some other folks in the district on on moving forward and I think in order we, we need to we as a district we as an area need to be proactive we can't sit back and just say dig our heels in and say we we can't be involved in the process it'll come from somewhere else if we're not and so and so that's the thing where we have to be engaged and, and find those efficiencies and, and we try this le as a legislature and sometimes when you write it down it's just like it's a business you may write down things that might work when you try to implement them in the long run you're really not saving any money and simply to cut and slash to say well we're saving money are you really sometimes you eliminate jobs what's happening is you're eliminating taxpayers and so we always got to keep those things in mind too. So it, it's a very difficult situation, mm -hmm. but but again, I'm I'm I, I'm still a very pro growth type of person. Believe that one of the keys to this whole thing is is continue to see economic growth, and we need to make sure the plans are in place that we continue to to let folks like Eagle and other companies give you the tools you need to continue to expand to provide the services that you provide in your communities. Let's talk about a few other things, and we're going to come back to kind of the tenor in the state house and then end up with you and your wheat field. A couple of things there, but first off, uh, what about guns and schools? That was something that I know when we talked earlier thought might be more of an issue, not guns in schools, but in the state universities right. and things like that. And it never made it out of committee. Uh, I was surprised that some of those that came with some real kind of going into the session, some momentum, it all kind of fell off. Well, I think what happened was everything got taken over by school finance, and the budget and taxes. And so some of the things that, that we thought we might see and get accomplished, and I mean, some committees did very little work this year because of all those big issues. And so I think that's what happened. Now, there were some things that happened as far as uh, the gun bill that did come through, uh, dealt with hospitals, you know, uh, KU mm -hmm. Med and some of our mental hospitals, which needs to happen, I believe. Um, you know, where I vote, I mean, I'm. I'm a pro-Second Amendment, I think the, the, the law the way it is should stand, but I think eh, we'll see what happens. I don't think that the issue's not going to go away with, with guns on campus in a sense. Uh, the, bi the biggest thing is we got to remember, we got to enforce the law. The law says you're 21. I think this, it's mm -hmm. easy to say every 18-year-old is not going to bring a shotgun on campus. If they do, they should be punished the way the way the law states. Already on the books. Absolutely. And that, 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 that's, I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. Let's, let's enforce the laws regardless of what it is. Let's enforce those laws before we start creating more laws. And every year we get books and books of, of new, new laws. laws new laws. <laughs> just, How much time was spent dealing with the national level? You, know, you mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things coming down that some regulations being rolled back, which are really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of the EPA had some that rolled back on dust and some things that were really going to look hard for Kansan to handle. How much time was spent in the state legislature kind of saying, okay, what's coming down? We can't do this because something may change on this end. Pro probably the biggest thing, I'm vice chair of water and environment. And we did, a, we did a lot of discussion about what was going on within the Environmental Protection Agency. You know agency. about that thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, one of the concerns was some of the funding cuts that the president proposed, how would that affect some of the programs that are working well in Kansas? And so that's really, as far as a lot of time, I'll be honest with you, Gary, we probably spent more time in the, in the, in the hallways talking about who is the president going to take from Kansas to be a part of his administration in some form. And uh, really, it seemed like there were days that that bogged us down and not getting anything done because there was a lot of whispering of, is the governor going to be here, is he not? Is the attorney general going to be here, is he not? Who's, who's, mm -hmm. Who of under, other uh, underlying people may be going to Washington? And so sometimes that, I think, kind of hurt the process because there was a lot of scuttlebutt of, of, of who is and isn't going to stay. And, and here we are, middle of, middle of July, and, and everybody's still kind of where they are. <laughs> Got there. Yeah. Talk about the tenor. What's it like? You know, you mentioned the hallways talking about that sort of thing. By the way, you'd be great in the ag department. Well, you know, we could start that rumor. <laughs> what do you think? All right. Anyway, inside that. Yeah. What's the tenor like? Is everybody still friendly at the end of the session after 114 days of looking mm -hmm. across the aisle going, I am tired of that guy. I, I mean, is it, does it get to that point? I, I think it does. It, it does, like anything. I mean, when, when you're intense for so long, and then once you finally get to that point, 
Um, but but I mean, I, I still talk to folks. Maybe we didn't vote the same. There's there's still ideas that continue to flow. I think it was a couple of days of just kind of uh, getting on. But you know, by the time January comes back around, and and we have meetings different places around the country that that we may go to, and and. Uh, so we have that interaction, and also there'll be some committees that'll be meeting. But I think overall, um, I, you still enjoy being there. Oh, absolutely! And 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 we had a lot of new freshmen, and so they will come back. It, it's it's a lot like you know if you're if you're an NFL rookie, you know after about so many weeks of playing, you're really not a rookie anymore. Or a, a college basketball, you know, KU basketball freshman. Well, after about halfway through the Big 12 season, you're really not a freshman mm -hmm. anymore. And so I think it's what you'll see coming in is, is folks continue to learn how the process works. And, I, I, and again, with it being election year, I think you're going to see a, a lot of positive things happening. Let's talk about some positive things as we end up the program because you mentioned standing out in your wheat field. There were some fantastic crops in Northwest Kansas. You mentioned the fact you think there are some economic things that are going in the right direction. When you're standing out in your wheat field, you see a great big field of wheat. What gets you excited about Kansas? Well, I still think it's the people. It really is. And, and I like to talk directly, directly to the folks who will be on the camera going out and seeing them on Main Street. We know there's still some challenges in the ag economy, and that, that really affects everybody. It's not just the elevator. It's the people that go out to eat. It's the people that buy the cars and the pickups. It's, you know, that come downtown haste mm -hmm. to shop. But I still believe that the Kansans will do what they want, that they need to do and know they want to support their communities. I look in that wheat field, I still think agriculture is still moving forward. And, and, and we will. And I'm a little concerned with some of the trade things, but I think we'll get that thing worked out. But one of the things that I'm excited about in the area that I represent is technology. And folks like you and other companies that have invested in broadband internet, I, I firmly believe that we talked about other building blocks to keep our economy strong. It's going to be that broadband internet. And we need to continue to make sure, as I said earlier, that you and other companies have those tools that you can continue to expand and to, to offer those. We can do a lot of different things, but I think one of the things that makes us unique, because I know there are some places here that have faster internet than some of our friends in the eastern side of the state. Mm -hmm. So those are the things. I think some things we're going to work on is to, to utilize the current programs we have to continue to, to build jobs and to get some of those service sector jobs and, and maybe bring some housing things to some of our other areas. So there's a lot of things that I'm, I'm excited about. I talk to people. I don't get much sleep because I'm, I, I get excited about trying to find answers to try to move forward because there's a reason why we all live here. We chose a reason. And so why can't we all work together to make that stronger? That, that, that's what I think about when I'm out in that wheat field. And that's what I think about how, what can I do as an elected representative to make sure that people have the best life that, that they can have from, from wherever I can do to help them. Well, if you want to find out more at home watching this, how do they go to your, you mentioned a Facebook site. Yep. Tell us about how to find you, whether it be on the internet sure. or via telephone, or how do they find you to say, yep. Ken, I like what I heard, do more of it here. I want to help. How do you do that? Well, I'm easy to find. I have a website, KenForKansas.com, and then I also on Facebook, Ken for Kansas, uh, on Twitter, at Ken Rogers, or you can call my cell phone. I, I don't hide from phone. I, I encourage people to, people to call me. It's 785-302-8416. Uh, it's usually right with me. And so unless I'm, I'm... Except I took it away yeah, from you. So someone's yeah. trying to call so, Fry right now, <laughs> but it's over there. But absolutely. But, but I, I want to be accessible. And, and uh, I, live, I live on a farm outside of Agra. And I can be in Ellis, which is one of the farthest places. Away. It's about 90, 90 minutes away. But I can be there. I, I love to talk you know, right where people live. If, if you want to come and meet somewhere, we'll discuss issues. If you want to chew on me, that's fine too. I, that, that's, that's part of the business. That probably has never happened, has <laughs> it? <laughs> that, that's part of it. Well, I hope if you're out there, because what we do in the state of Kansas, you mentioned it, you know, we chose to live here. How do we make it better? If you want to follow up with Ken, do so. Going to his website, find out Ken for Kansas, mm -hmm. yep. right? Ken, thank you for being a part Appreciate of our program it. today. Ken Rogers has been our guest. Ken represents us in the northwest corner of the state, the 110th district of the Kansas legislature. Hope you connect with him sometime between now and the start of the next session. Our program is brought to you by Hayes Med and by Eagle Communications, our community connected. It's a beautiful day in our super high speed internet, great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, 
Our company is employee-owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature-laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications, our community connected.